Hi guys, Heather here. Today we're going to go to the land of respiratory, but first I'd like to say hello to Natalie. Hi Natalie! And she was wondering about all the different types of respiratory devices. And that's a really good question because I remember when I was in nursing school, I was like, why are there so many masks that they're trying to confuse us with? Well, first, as you know, there's the nasal cannula where oxygen needs up to about five or six liters. Sometimes the nose can get dry with all that oxygen blowing into it, so you can hook up a humidifier to the O2 outlet if needed. If your patient's sats are less than 92 on like six liters nasal cannula, then you can put them on a simple mask, which is good for oxygen needs from five to 15 liters. If your patient needs more than 15 liters of oxygen, they might need to be intubated. Did you know that the percent of oxygen in the air is only like 21%? Crazy, huh? This is also called the FiO2, fraction of inspired oxygen. And also, the oxygen percent in higher altitudes is actually the same, but the partial pressure is lower, which means that it takes longer for the oxygen to circulate through the blood and get to the organs and the tissues. And that's what may cause hypoxia. So the simple mask can deliver up to about 60% oxygen. And then there's the Venturi mask, which I don't really see that often, but I do notice it a lot on trach patients. But it's really cool because they have this mechanical valve where you can adjust the FiO2, the percent of oxygen being given, so your patient can get like 30, 40, 50% oxygen. And then there's the non-rebreather, which can deliver up to 100% of oxygen. The cool thing about the non-rebreather is they have this valve and so the air and the CO2 that the patient breathes out gets trapped in that little bag so they can't rebreathe it. Both the Venturi mask and the non-rebreather are good for COPD patients because the Venturi controls the percent of oxygen being given and the non-rebreather prevents rebreathing that CO2. In a healthy person, increased CO2 levels in the blood stimulate our respiratory centers and tell us to breathe. COPD patients have problems retaining CO2, and because their CO2 levels are chronically high, their respiratory center becomes less sensitive to the high CO2 levels, and this decreases their respiratory drive. So when these patients receive too much oxygen, their body thinks they're getting enough. And since their respiratory centers are less sensitive to high CO2 levels, they won't be breathing enough to get rid of that CO2. So their oxygen saturation should be between 88 and 92%. But if their sats are any higher than that, they could be getting too much oxygen and retaining too much CO2. So that's the respiratory lesson for now, guys. Have a great day and I'll talk to you soon, Kay.